My name is Brian Swan, and I'm a PHP developer advocate at Microsoft. Recently, the 1.1 version of the PHP Manager for IIS was released, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to give you a tour of what it can do. The PHP Manager for IIS is an, a plugin for the IIS Manager that allows you to manage PHP installations and run multiple versions of PHP on the same IIS server. You can download it by going to phpmanager.codeplex.com clicking on the Downloads tab, and then selecting the version that's appropriate for your machine, either the 32-bit or the 64-bit version. It's a very quick download and install, but to save us a little bit of time, I've, uh, I've done that ahead of time. Uh, so after you've installed it, you can start the IIS Manager and navigate to a website that you have set up. I have just the default website set up here. When you've done that, you should see the PHP Manager icon uh, in your IIS Manager. So let me start that. And what we'll see here is a message that says, I don't have PHP uh, enabled on this server. It's fairly easy to do that. I'll just click on register a new PHP version and navigate to where I have my PHP installations set up. I've, I've taken the liberty ahead of time of downloading a few different versions of PHP. And I have them all right here. I've got 5.2, 5.3, and 5.3.4. So just for, as an example, let's say we want 5.2. I navigate to that CGI executable, click OK, and now I have 5214 running on, on this machine. Uh, I can actually verify that that's the case by clicking Check PHP Info, which just calls the PHP Info function and allows me to see the output of, of that function in the IIS Manager. Go back to the main page here, and suppose I want another version of PHP. Well, let's register a new version. So I'm going to go back to, again, where I've already downloaded my PHP, uh, my PHP installations. And let's say we want to try version 5.3.4. Point at that executable, say OK, and now I'm running 5.3.4. And we can verify that again by calling PHP info. We can see that it's running 5.3.4. And to go back and forth between those two versions, we just change the PHP version. Now we can say, well, now I want it to run uh, 5.2 uh, again. And we're back to running 5.2. So if you have an application that's running on this site, it makes it very easy to move back and forth between those versions and, uh, and test against different versions of PHP. One of the things the PHP Manager is doing when it registers a new PHP version is making changes to the PHP INI file so that PHP will run optimally on IIS. To look at those settings, you can come down to the PHP Settings section here and click on Manage All Settings. And this will give you a, uh, a, a nice UI for managing all the settings that correspond to values, uh, to, that correspond to settings in your PHP INI file. And we can actually make changes uh, from within this UI. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make a change you probably wouldn't really want to make. I'm going to delete the date.timezone setting. So we want to delete that. And when I go back to the main page, I get uh, a, a notice from the PHP manager that says, uh, PHP is not configured optimally on this machine, and it will provide recommendations. And it will do this for anything that it views as a non-optimal non configuration. Uh, it gives us a description and a recommendation, and obviously we want the date.timezone setting set. I'm going to use the recommended value and click OK. And now I'm back to an optimally configured uh, PHP. Within the PHP settings section, there are a couple different uh, ways to look at your settings. Uh, we can look at error reporting configuration. Uh, and in this case, let's say we want to have a development machine as opposed to a production machine. If I apply those settings, uh, I can go back to the main page and I'm now, I've got PHP configured as my development machine. And we might want to actually just look at manage all settings to see exactly what is, what has been configured and make sure it's what I want. Display errors is on. Uh, error reporting is set to E uh, all and E strict. Uh, log errors is on. Uh, for the sake of argument, or uh, for demonstration purposes really, let's suppose that we want to edit this and we only want E all on. So we can make that change, click OK, uh, and go back to the main, go back to the main page. Um, the set runtime limits allows you to uh, make changes to configuration settings that govern your PHP runtime limits. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way those are here, so I won't, I won't make any changes. Uh, and the last thing I'll, I'll point out here uh, is that you have easy access to your, uh, your errors log. So if I, 
if I click on the errors log here, actually we'll see that it's that it's empty. Uh, I haven't I've just res registered uh, this PHP version and I haven't made any calls, so we would expect it to be empty. So um, anytime you make changes to a uh, a PHP configuration setting, the PHP manager is recycling the PHP process. Uh, so that those changes are live immediately. You don't have to manually restart the web server to have those changes take effect. So it's nice to be able to just make those changes and know that they are uh, they are in effect immediately. Last thing I want to look at is how to enable or disable an extension. And to do that, I'm going to use the PHP 5.3 version that I have registered. So come down to the PHP extension section and click on enable or disable an extension and I'm taken to a UI that makes it very easy to uh, enable or disable an extension. Uh, if I right click on say the WinCache extension here and say disable, it is moved to the into the list of disabled extensions and just as easily uh, I can enable that extension and have it have it moved back. And as I said earlier, the uh, PHP manager is recycling the PHP process every time we make a change here so that every time I en enable or disable an extension that is uh, in effect immediately. Go back to the main page here and show you how we can add an extension. So if I click on add an extension, uh, I can navigate to a, uh, a folder that has other extensions in it. Now notice that was not the folder uh, that is the extension directory for my uh, my PHP installation. So let's say I want to add the SQL Serve uh, extension. We click uh, open, uh, click OK, and we can see now that that extension is, uh, not only is it included in my PHP uh, installation, but it is enabled. So the PHP manager actually copied the DLL from the one directory to the extension directory for this PHP installation. We go back to the main page, and I'll show you how you can use the PHP manager to run multiple versions of PHP on the same IIS server. So I've come over here to my default website and expand this, and you can see I have lots of directories under my default website. All of these are running under PHP 5.3.4 currently by default. But let's suppose that this test directory, I wanted to be running under a different version of PHP. We just navigate to that and start the PHP manager again and change this PHP version. Uh, I can change this PHP version to the 5.2 version that I have registered, and now any applications that are running in that test directory are running under PHP 5.2. And if we go back to the default website, we can see that uh, by, by default, it and other, uh, the other directories uh, are running under PHP 5.3.4. So I can do that on a, on a per directory basis. I can also do it on a per site basis. If I want to add a new website here, and we can set this up, uh, I won't go through this process here, but if we want to add a new website, then we just use the PHP Manager to register a version or versions for that particular uh, website, and we can have multiple versions of PHP running uh, at the same time. So uh, that is the PHP Manager. Uh, I hope this was uh, interesting and useful, and thanks a lot.